What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another follow-up video and say I'm bringing you episode 36 of our top 5 mod series So if you guys do go on to enjoy this video, make sure you like subscribe and let's get right into it All right, everybody, so the first mod we have is the Minimum and Watchtowers mod by Spiffy Sky Trooper, and essentially what this mod is going to be doing is adding in a variety of watchtowers around the Commonwealth. It's going to be nine to be exact, but the description of this mod says, Once watching over the land from above, these now fallen Minimum Watchtowers kept a lookout when the Minimum reigned supreme in the Commonwealth. Since their fall, these lonely towers have been left to rot. If one is fortunate enough, you can stumble across an old Minimum supply cache to aid in your adventures. There are a total of nine towers to be discovered, each with a representative map marker. Each tower contains some means of waiting or sleeping and has a container of loot for help. One may ask why there's not more watchtowers, and there's two simple reasons for that. Firstly, the Commonwealth is a very crowded with unmarked locations. Secondly, the mod creator wanted to, you know, essentially put them in a somewhat realistic location, and I feel like he did a pretty good job at doing that. This watchtower that you're seeing right here is going to be in the woods a little bit south of Sanctuary, kind of towards Abernathy Farm a little bit. They're kind of going to be in just the middle of nowhere, so they're not exactly the easiest to find all the time. You will maybe have to look up different videos and maybe see on where you can actually find these if you can't find them. But this one right here has a ton of supply in it. I found that was pretty useful. Um, there's a whole bunch of meds. There's different Minutemen hats and outfits and different explosives and sometimes really good guns that you can find in here. The mod creator also did a pretty good job in making the watchtowers actually look abandoned. You'll see a whole bunch of skeletons and just debris around the watchtower and I think that does a pretty good job of making it look a little bit more realistic, but you can also find laser muskets all around these places just because it's kind of the preferred weapon of the Minutemen. And this mod is actually kind of a rip from the PC and Xbox editions with just some custom assets that had to be removed just because it's on PS4, so he does apologize if it kind of hinders your experience, but I still it feels like there's a lot to offer in this mod. But I feel like it's just kind of cool if you want to add in some extra little locations that you can find in your game if you've already played the game before and you're just trying to explore something new. And this mod isn't going to be requiring any DLC or anything like that. And it is going to be pretty much compatible with every other mod you're going to be using in your load order. Just kind of be careful with other Minutemen -min mods. I'm not really sure what would affect it, but you never know nowadays. I recently had two mods conflict in a way that it made it just so my reloading was really, really slow and it was it almost made the game kind of unplayable. But overall, this mod's pretty decent considering that a lot of its material had to be removed to be actually playable on the PS4, but overall, I give it, it's a solid mod. The next mod we have is the Skillzerk Weapons Pack by Skillzerk, and this is going to be adding in 18 new unique weapons into Fallout 4 that you can get from vendors, or they can be dropped by NPCs like raiders and stuff whenever you kill them. Now, let's go ahead and talk about some of the weapons that you can expect to see when you download this mod, and the first one is going to be a combat sniper rifle that uses shell ammunition. It has more range, more accuracy, and can be made into an auto or semi-automatic by switching receivers at a weapons workbench. You can make this for combat or sniping, but it will lack critical hit bonus damage. There's also the semi assault rifle, which uses the 5mm rounds. It has less damage, but a bigger clip size. There's the Gas Ram Sniper Shotgun that uses shell ammunition that has high accuracy, high range, high stagger, and extremely low ammo capacity though. It's going to also be slow reloading but excessive damage. There's the 5mm pistol that uses a 5mm ammunition, has less damage but a bigger mag size, and it's going to be semi-automatic. Next we have the light machine gun that uses a 308 caliber that has a medium stagger, high mag, high weight, decent damage, and a machine gun comparable accuracy. There is the 50 caliber revolver that is going to be using the 50 caliber ammunition that does high damage, high critical damage, multiplier, and higher VATS cost. There is also the combat laser rifle, which is going to be kind of like a standard one that just uses fusion cell ammunition with slightly higher range but less impact force. But the cool thing about this one is the laser shoots blue. Now some of the more crazier weapons is going to be the Zara Bomba, which uses a mini nuke ammunition that launches a carpet of nukes, which is not going to be generated from NPCs, you're going to have to actually buy this. There's also the Shek machine pistol that uses the 38mm ammunition with slightly higher VATS cost with a high reload speed and reduced damage. Now when you download this mod, you will see them used by enemies all around the commonwealth, so sometimes they can actually have some pretty cool weapons you can pick up that you didn't actually realize were in the game. You can also find them in gunner supply bags, and most of all, there is no DLC required for this mod. 
A lot of times these really big weapons pack mods do require most DLCs, but thankfully this one does not. And it's going to be pretty much compatible with every other mod you're going to be using, despite some guns mods maybe, I'm not really sure. Um, some weapon effects mods may be kind of counteractive against this mod, I'm not really sure yet. But overall, it's a pretty good mod. It adds in a ton of new weapons that are actually really fun to find around the Commonwealth. The next mod we have is the Vanilla Armor Paints mod by Shanik the Oat Meme, and this is going to be essentially adding in a bunch of different armor paints into the game that you can be making and putting on your armor at a armor workbench. And because this is using 100% vanilla assets, it's going to be PS4 compatible, which is nice so we can use on the PS4, but this is going to be adding more visual customization for armors as well. Now, the reason I like this mod is because I'm not really the biggest fan of combat armor color, just in general. I don't really think it looks that good on most of the outfits I'm wearing in the game. So let's say you like a more of a darker and black version of power armor you can go and just go ahead and use the shadowed version and paint th that color or if you like a more polished metal you can always do that as well but that's pretty much all this mod really has to offer it's not the biggest mod but if you do like your armor looking really nice and looking different than you know the standard base game you can always add this mod into your load order it's not going to be requiring any dlc and it's going to be pretty much compatible with every other mod you're going to be using Alright, this next mod is the True Pridwin mod by Mad God Shio Gorth, and this is going to be a small mod that cleans and refurbishes the ship's interior and makes it into a nicer headquarters worthy of the Brotherhood of Steel with no more trash, stained beds, decrepit furniture. All that's going to be pretty much redone and re like refurbished, and it makes the Pridwin look really nice. The new interiors have been modified including the player's quarters and immersion is guaranteed or your cap's back. Now again, this isn't, you know, the biggest mod, you're not going to notice it like right off the tip of the eye, but when you when you go and look at the barracks of the place, it actually makes it look really, really nice. They have nice beds now, nice desks, there's no more clutter anywhere, and if you go to like your quarters and the captain's quarters and things like that, it just makes everything look way more nicer. It looks like this place has actually been kept up because before, there's just stuff all over the place and all ripped like furniture and all that type of stuff that you know doesn't really look like it would be owned by a really big t sort of militarized um, group of people and like I was saying before this mod isn't going to be changing your game all really that much but if you are more of a fan of the more cleaner look in Fallout 4 this is going to be a good mod for you now something for this mod it is going to be requiring the Automatron Far Harbor and vault -Tec DLC which is unfortunate but Fortunately for you, the Automatron DLC and the vault -Tec DLC are pretty cheap, and the Far Harbor DLC is pretty old, so if you can get a pretty good price for the Season Pass now, I think I bought it on PC for like 20 bucks, so, and it does go on sale, so if you just want to get the DLC, you can get all of these different mods I showcase in these videos, and it just makes your life way easier, you don't have to worry about, oh, can I use this mod, or does it affect, you know, DLC and all that type of stuff. And lastly, this mod should not affect any other mods in your game. Now, I'm not saying that this isn't going to affect other Pridwin mods. I'm sure it will. Just any other mods in your game that does not really affect the Pridwin all that much shouldn't be affected. But if you do have a mod that's going to be messing with all the interiors and different things with the Pridwin, you know, I'd kind of stay away. But I feel like that's just common sense. Alright guys, the final mod we have is the Slog Hotel, and it is going to be by Mad Rocks. And this is going to be adding in a huge, essentially a hotel into the Slog, and it is actually a really, really cool creation that this mod creator made. But do not do what I do and fast travel directly to the Slog, because this mod has so many intermoving parts and everything that needs to load into the game. What you should do is just fast travel to the Green Top Nursery before, and start walking to the Slog, because the things need to load into your game, and if you don't, you're going to have a really, really bad FPS problem like I have in the game gameplay. Another thing, you should also make sure your slog is somewhat clean. You don't want to have a lot of things built there because otherwise a ton of creations you've made and a ton of creations he's made are they're just going to clip together and it's kind of going to ruin the whole thing. Now to actually unlock the majority of the doors in this place you are going to have to get a key and this key is going to be located just at the little main entrance behind the desk. There's going to be a safe there that you can actually lock pick. It's unlockable by pretty much everybody because it is a lock pick um, novice. So whenever you unlock it the key will be in there and then after that you you unlock a door and it pretty much unlocks every other door so you really shouldn't have to worry about um, getting into any other different places in the hotel. Thankfully, the mod creator actually made a trailer to this mod so I'm going to be showcasing this right now and the link to this video is going to be in the description below. Thank you. 
So hopefully this gave you guys a pretty good view of what actually all this mod has to offer. It's actually a pretty big build, but that is pretty much all, all the mods I have for you today, guys. If you did enjoy this episode, make sure you guys like, subscribe. I will see you guys on Friday with a new video, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.